Knockers Uppers. Today, on Echoes Through Time, we delve into the fascinating history of a profession that may be unfamiliar to many, that of the knocker uppers. In the early 19th century, the working class neighborhoods of places like England and Ireland were bustling with activity. These areas, densely populated, were characterized by narrow and paved alleys and small houses clustered together, built with simple materials like bricks, wood, and roofs of thatch or tiles. Often, these dwellings lacked basic amenities like running water or sewage systems, leading to insanitary conditions and poor hygiene. The streets teemed with life, with itinerant vendors, children playing, and people coming and going between their homes and workplaces. These neighborhoods were often close to industrial areas such as factories, shipyards, and docks, meaning that noise and pollution were omnipresent. Furthermore, illumination was scarce, limited to flickering gas lamps or candles in the windows. This plunged the nights into a dense and often hazardous darkness. The profession of knocker-uppers flourished during the Industrial Revolution in countries like the Netherlands, Great Britain, and Ireland. In an era when alarms were scarce and unreliable, the role of the knocker-up was crucial. With the rise of industry, workers needed to rise at ungodly hours to get to their jobs on time. The duty of a knocker-upper was to ensure that people woke up promptly, especially those whose livelihoods depended on timely attendance at work. Well into the 1940s and 1950s, knocker-uppers continued their work, although their numbers began to decline with technological advances and the increasing availability of more affordable alarm clocks. However, in some corners of industrial England, this profession persisted until the early 1970s, adapting to changes and maintaining its relevance in certain communities. To carry out their task, knocker-uppers employed a variety of ingenious tools. Some would knock on clients' doors with short, heavy sticks, while others used long, light poles, often made of bamboo, to reach windows on upper floors. There are even records of knocker-ups using blowpipes to fulfill their duties, demonstrating boundless creativity in their effective waking methods. In exchange for this vital service, they would typically receive a few coins per week, a modest but necessary compensation for many. In addition to waking people up, knocker-uppers also took on the task of extinguishing gas lamps at dawn, using a snuffer as a tool. This additional duty showcased their versatility and willingness to take on various responsibilities for the benefit of the community. The profession of knocker-uppers employed a large number of people, especially in industrial cities like Manchester, where demand for this service was high. Often, it was elderly men and pregnant women who performed this work, although occasionally even policemen, supplemented their income by carrying out this task during their morning patrols, reflecting the economic importance of this occupation for many working families. A noteworthy detail is that some mining families in Ferryhill, County Durham, had waking slates embedded in the outer walls of their homes. These slates allowed miners to write their shift details, with chalk so that the mine's knocker-upper could wake them at the appropriate time, demonstrating how the community organized itself to ensure that everyone could fulfill their work responsibilities. The profession of knocker-ups has been documented and explained in various media, highlighting its historical and cultural significance. For example, in the episode The Industrial Revolution of the television series The Worst Jobs in History, this occupation and its impact on society at the time are detailed. Additionally, in Paul Flynn's musical The Wine Road Boys, a knocker-upper appears at the beginning, walking alongside a group of children holding slates with a number written in chalk, indicating the time they wished to be awakened in the morning. The profession of knocker-uppers also left its mark on literature, especially in the works of Charles Dickens. In his famous novel Great Expectations, Dickens briefly describes a knocker-upper, demonstrating how this figure was so common in Victorian society that it was casually mentioned in the literature of the time. This detail adds depth to the historical and social context of the novel, showing how the presence of knocker-uppers was an integral part of everyday life in 19th century England. <laughs>